On your practice final, on questions 38 through 40, we're going to be looking at logarithms. Now, what logarithms are is when we have a small change becoming a big change. So, earthquakes are on a logarithm scale. When you go from a 3 to 4 on the Richter scale, that's going up by a factor of 10. So each one, the mobile of 10, is their log base 10. So logarithms are used when we have a small change equaling a large change. And how we solve these is we take our logarithms and we can turn them then into an exponential and solve the exponential. We're first going to learn how to just transform these back and forth. So I'm just going to give you some and we're just going to transfer them back and forth. Right now, it's written as a logarithm. How would we transform this into an exponential? When we look at our formula. The base is your a. So in our case, that 6 is going to be our a. The number inside the logarithm is your x. And the number on the end is the y. So if I transform this, what's it going to look like as an exponential? Well, as an exponential, our x's are 36. So that's 36 equals a, which is 6, y, which is 2. And that's true because 6 squared is what? 36. And see how they match up? So you can transform a logarithm into an exponential, or vice versa. We'll do one more of these, and then we're going to start solving these when we have to transform it and find the missing part. So let's look at this one. Let's try to transform this one. Log base 4 of 1 over 64 equals a negative 3. Now we're going to transform it. So we'll use our formula here. Let's make sure we can see that formula. The base is the a. The number inside the logarithm is the x. The number on the end is the y. So we're going to try to transform this. And we need to transform it into x equals a to the y power. Well, we know x is 1 over 64. What is our base of our logarithm? Our a value is what? 4. And what's our y value? Negative 3. These are the same. Why are these going to be the same? They're going to equal each other. Negative exponent. What can I do with that? I can rewrite this as a fraction. And what do we know about 4 cubed? Well, 4 cubed is what? 4 cubed is 64. So see, both sides would come out to be 1 over 1. 64, so they're the same. These are just showing you how to convert. We're not solving for any of the pieces yet. That's going to be what we're going to be doing next. If they don't come out the same, did we do something wrong? Yeah, yeah. But the, these are just showing you how to transform them. There's none of these in your test, per se, but we have to know how to transform them for the next ones. The next ones that we're going to be looking at, we're going to be missing one of the values, and we're going to have to find it. So we're going to have to define our value by transforming it. So let's try and solve this one. Let's try and solve x equals log base 3 
of 1 over 81. Now, what does our formula look like? Our formula looks like y equals log base a of x, and that is going to transform into x equals a to the y power. So we're going to have to transform it. We're going to label our pieces, put it back together, and we're going to be able to solve it. So the base is always your a. So that 3 is your a. The number inside your logarithm is your x. And then by itself is the y. Is everyone okay with how I label it? The x and the y might be different, but in this case, the y is going to be the x there. When I transform it, what is it going to look like? Well, we want x equals a to the y power. So what is x? x is 1 over 81. Okay, so we know that. What is our a? Our a is 3. And what is our y value? x. Now we solved something like this earlier today. And before break, we looked at one exactly like this. How would we find the value of x? Well, first off, let's go ahead and get rid of that 1 over 81. Using the negative exponent rule, we can write that as 81 to the negative first power. And everyone okay with that? So we turn that fraction into a negative exponent. Now, we know we want the common base of 3. 3 to the first is 3. 3 squared is 9. 3 cubed is 27, and what about 3 to the 4th? Well, 3 to the 4th would be what? 81, isn't it? Okay, so that's what we want. So I can now transform that 81 into 3 to the 4th power. Now it's negative, so I'll keep the negative with it. And now what do we have? We have 3 to the negative 4th power equals 3 to the x power. Are the bases the same? Yes. So what is my x value then going to be? Bases are the same. So my x value will be what? x value will be negative 4. Let's do a couple more of these. These are logarithms. And we're going to try to find the missing parts. The next one that we're going to look at, we're going to have to find the base. So let's try and work with this one. This one, we don't know the base. So on this one, we've got log base x of 1 over 32 equals 5. And again, we're going to try and solve it, and we're trying to find the missing component, which in this case is that, that base A. So your X is going to be your A component. The 1 over 32, well, that's your X. And the 5, that is your Y. Right? So we're okay with how I label those. What is it going to transform into? Well, it's going to transform into X equals a to the y power. We've got our pieces. We can plug them in. So x is 1 over 32. Our base is unknown. That's x. And what's our y? y is 5, isn't it? So is everyone okay with that so far? Now, what we need to do is we need to either make sure the bases are the same or the exponents are the same. We want to find this x, and this x is a base. So that means we need to make sure that both of them are raised to the fifth power. And so how are we going to do that? Let's think about what we know here and how we're going to transform it. What do we know about that 1 over 32? Well, that 1 over 32, I can rewrite that as 32 to 
to the negative first power, can't I? Okay, nothing new there. We want to make sure that these exponents are the same. Okay, so how do we go about doing that? Well, what do we know about 32? We know that 32, if we look at 2, 2 to the first power is 2. Okay. 2 squared is what? 4. 2 cubed is 8. 2 to the fourth power is 16. And 2 to the fifth power is what? 32. So I can now rewrite this as 2 to the negative 5 power, and that's going to equal x to the what? Fifth power. So we need to do one more step here so that we can get it to come out right, so we can solve it. And we've got to make sure our bases are the same. Right now, the exponents are different. One's a negative 5, one is a what? Positive 5. So let's flip that over and let's rewrite this as 1 over 2 to the fifth power and that's going to equal x to the fifth power. Right? Because I can transform it back and forth if I need to. Negative exponents can become fractions. Why did I do that? I did that so look at my exponents now. Are the exponents the same now? So what is my x going to be? The exponents are the same, so the bases have to be the same, so x has to equal what? One half. Okay, I could have done it a different way. I could have not moved it at the very beginning. I always like to get rid of my fractions, though, see what I'm working with. And then if, if my exponents don't match up, if they're off by a sign, you can make it a fraction, and then they'll work. We'll do two more of these, and then we'll just look at some questions on our practice function. So let's try and, and work through two more of these. Sometimes they may have um, square roots involved. Now, we may need to rewrite these square roots. Let me find a good one here to look at. So we can transform. So let's try and work with this one. How about we have log base 8 of the square root of 8 to the 6th power equals x. And this is going to be like one of your, your practice final questions. I want to go ahead and work with this first. So let's see if we can break this down. We need to remember this. The square root of a is the same thing as a to the one-half power. Whenever you have a square root, sometimes it's going to be easier to rewrite it as a half power. So when we look at the square root of 8 to the 6th power. I can rewrite that as 8 to the 6th power with a 1 half outside because square roots are a half power. Now, what can we do from here? These are multiplying, and what's 6 times a half here? 6 times a half is going to be what? times a half is going to be 3. So that's going to be 8 to the third power. And we're going to replace that over here in a moment. So we can replace that square root of 8 to the sixth power. We can replace that with 8 to the third power, because that's what it is. So we got rid of our root there. Just like question 39 on your practice final. It's almost the same, just different numbers is all. Now, what do we know? We know that the base is A, so our 8 is A. We know this entire part is your X. 
and the number on the end is the one. So we can now transform it into an exponential so we can solve it. So we're going to use x equals a to the y power. So let's go ahead and fill it in. We know our x is 8 to the third. Our a is 8. And our y is what? x. This one's actually very, very simple because what do we know? Are the bases the same? Yes. So that means that x must equal now what? 3. All you have to know how to do on these is transform it from a logarithm into an exponential. Okay, when we got to this point, what we have is we have our a, which is the 8, right? Our x is this entire part right here. And then sometimes the x and the y, is it, you have to make sure it matches up the formula correctly. So that's your x. And what's my y in this case? It's what? x. So then when we use our formula, our x is 8 to the what? Third. Okay, so that goes there. Our a is what? 8. And what's our y? x. Now you can see how it works. I know it's confusing sometimes with the x's and the y's, but label them on the logarithm, transform it to an exponential, and then finish it. And let's do one more, and then we'll look at some other questions on our practice fine. Look at this one. And again, we're going to try and solve this. What do we know? We know that 9, that is your base, so that's your A. We know that 1 over 81 is your X. And the X is the Y. What's our formula? X equals A to the Y power. So let's go ahead and fill it in. And see what we got. So we have it. So we know x. And x is 1 over 81. Our a is what? 9. And our y is what? x. And we have to transform this a bit to get the bases to match up. So let's make this 81 to the negative first power equals 9 to the x power. And what do we know about 81? Well, 81 is 9, what? Squared. Okay. So that means then 9 to the negative second power equals 9 to the x power. Are my bases the same? Yes. So that means that x is now going to equal what? Negative 2. And this is almost exactly the same as question 40. Just different numbers is all. And I've got your practice final already posted in Blackboard. I'll repost it again so you'll see it in an email. You need to see the key on how these will work out. We've got a few more questions to look at. So now we're going to look at some questions on our practice final, just so we remember how these are done. And we're going to begin by looking at some commonly missed questions. We're going to begin by looking at question 13 on your practice final. You said 13. Yep, question 13. Mm -hmm. Practice final question 13. We need to graph this. And this is a commonly made mistake on this problem. It's very, very simple to do. And I want to make sure we don't miss it. So 
But this is what we're working with here. Now, what do you notice about that square? That square is outside the parentheses, right? So we need to distribute that square through. And that means that 2 squared is 4, right? And x squared is x squared. Now, how would we graph this now? We want to graph 4x squared. What is it going to look like? Does anyone remember? Okay, yep, probably it's going to look like a u, isn't it? So it's basically going to look similar to that. Remember that? Okay, now, are we moving it up or down any? Is there any number on the end? No. Is there any number inside a set of parentheses? No. So where are we going to start at then? Okay, we're going to start at 0, 0. The reason why this one is a commonly missed problem is that square outside. You've got to remember to distribute it through. So we're going to start at 0, 0. Now, what does that 4 represent? That 4 is like your slope, and that's going to be 4 over 1. So we're going to have to go up 4 and then 1 over 1. So we start at the 0, 0. We go up 4. And then we go over 1. We make our dot, and we curve it. Now, we know we need to get the other side, so how do we get the other side? We go up 4, and then we go what? Back 1, curve it, and there's our graph. Now, I don't want us to miss this one because this is a very, very easy question. Is everyone okay with that? All you have to remember is to distribute that square through. Now, if it would have been a 5x inside, what would it be? 25x squared, right? I think the one on your take-home final has a different number. I think it's a 4. But is everyone okay with how we did that? Because that's a very easy question, and I do not want us to miss that. Another question that sometimes students miss is 15. We have done ones like this before. We're going to go over it again. And for 15, we've got y equals 2, f of x. And they give you a graph of f of x. And we need to transform this. minus 2, 2, and that's 2 minus 2. Our graph looks like this. And so this is the original. Uh-huh. Um, so on the uh, take-home, yes. is it like extra credit or is it like... No, it's for a grade. grade. Yep, it's worth 100 points. So I'll grade that take-home final. So do the best you can on that take-home final. What I recommend is go through the practice final those questions will match up to questions on the take-home final. Different numbers in a different order. So work out the practice final. Use it then to do the take-home final. And make your notes off of that. You can have a page of notes or a stack of note cards. But you'll kind of know what you're going to be expected to know for your final. Because they're going to be pretty much exactly the same as these questions. Just different numbers again. Now what do we want? We want that 2 in front. What does that 2 do? And that's like your slope, so it's going to make it 2 times as tall. So that 2 in front, that tells me then that I have to multiply the y part by 2. So what's my new graph going to look like? We're not moving the x values, we're only moving the y values. And that 2 is going to basically double it in size. So right now it's at negative 2, 2. So my 
on my new graph, it's going to be at negative 2, 4. So I took my y part and I doubled it. If it would have been a 3, you'd multiply it by 3. What about the one below? Well, it's going to be at 2, negative 4. So now we just make our graph. So what happened to our picture here? All we did to our picture was what? Make it twice as tall. That's it. Why did we make it twice as tall? Because that 2 is in front, and that's like your slope. This is going to double the height of it. That's all it did. I don't want you to miss that question, because that's an easy, easy question. Another commonly missed question that I see students miss this one all the time is 19. And what happens on 19 is students only give me part of the answer. These are absolute values, so that means I've got to have two equations. A lot of times, students will forget to do the second half. They'll only do half of it. Absolute values, though, you've got to do what? Two equations, right? So make sure you get both of them. Guarantee you that someone will only do half of it. Absolute values, though, you've got to do the two equations. I'm trying to pick the questions I know students make simple mistakes on. So what would my two equations look like? Well, they would look like minus 6 plus 7x equals 9 minus 6x. And what's my other one? Minus 6 plus 7x equals, put a minus in front, parentheses 9 minus 6x. Remember those? You've got to get the two equations. Why? Because this is an absolute value. We can solve these, and we can get our answer. So for the first one, I'm going to move that 6x over, and I'm going to also move that 6 over. Adding them up, that gives you 13x equals 9 plus 6, that's 15. Divide by your 13, and x now equals 15 over 13, right? Now, that's only half of it. And I guarantee you that some will stop here. That's not what we want. We have to get both of them. How do we get the other one? We get the other one by distributing through that negative. That's going to be then minus 6 plus 7x equals minus 9, double negative makes it a positive 6. We're going to move things around and solve it. So move the 6x over, add the 6. So that leaves you then with x equaling now negative 3. And that's it. But notice we got two solutions. I know this is a question and someone will only give me half of it. You have to get both of them. We'll do one more. We'll take a break. We'll come back. We'll look at a few more. And that will end the lecture for today. So one more. And then we'll take a short break. Come back and do a few more. Question 23. How would we handle this one? And what we need to do is we need to get rid of our exponent somehow. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move that 
2x plus 5 to the half power over. That way I can square both sides. that 2x plus 5 to the half power over. And now, how do I get rid of my exponents? I want to get rid of that half power, right? So what would happen if I were to square both sides? If I were to square both sides, what would happen? You go away, wouldn't it? Right? Because what's 2 times a half? 1, and it would go away. So we're going to square both sides. And that leaves you then with x squared plus 2 equals 2x plus 5. And now we know what to do, don't we? Because right? we got rid of our exponents. How do we solve this? We need to set this equal to what? zero and solve. Okay, so move it over, square to get rid of that one half power. Half power is the same as a root. How would you get rid of a square root? You square both sides. Okay, so let's go ahead and finish this out. Set it to zero. Move that 2x over. Move the 5 over. That leaves you then with x squared minus 2x minus 3 equals zero. This should factor out very nicely. First times the last is a minus 3. And what two numbers multiply together to give you 3? Subtract together to give you the 2 in the middle. Okay, 3 and 1. So we need a minus 3 and a positive 1. So that would then factor into 1. x minus 3 x plus 1. Another commonly made mistake is this. I guarantee that someone will say my answers are x equals negative 3 and x equals 1. Is that correct? No, because we need to make sure we solve them. So x minus 3 equals 0. Move that 3 over. So x equals then 3 x plus 1 equals 0. Move that 1 over. So x equals then 1. Negative 1, and those are your two solutions. So your two solutions would be 3 and negative 1. Let's go ahead and take another short break, and we'll come back, and we'll finish up with a couple more questions. We'll probably be finishing a few minutes early. So I want to come back and at least look at two or three more of these. So let's meet back at, how about, um, 8.35. That way I can get this video processed.